Okay. Well, we will go ahead and get started. Jason, if I did my math right, yeah. exactly 350 starts ago, spanning 18 years, you made your first start on the PGA Tour. Yeah. And it was right here at the John Deere Classic in 2006. Yeah. Yep. You've made four starts since then, yep. uh, most recent being 2011, so we're obviously thrilled to have you back. Just a few comments on being back here uh, for the first time in 13 years in the spot where you got it all started 17 or 18 ago. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, this is my first start as a professional golf. I still remember it. Um, actually, I think we might have stayed down at that Super 8 hotel somewhere. Oh, was that good memory. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good memory. Oh. Yeah, well, that was it. And if I do remember that... I just want to go I on think, record and say I have arrived yeah, at Super think, 8 with Jason Day in yeah. the same sentence. Well, I think back then, the I think your AC unit fell out of the wall. Oh! <laughs> so he I could had, crawl from his room to the outside, which was that's even That's when funnier. I had the dog come into my room on yeah. my bed. I literally woke up with a dog on my bed. Yeah. yeah. And then my, uh, my caddy at the time, Colin, he, uh, you walk into his room and it had a heart-shaped... Uh, like bathtub right next to the bed it was like it was like it was high rent stuff at the back then it was it was great no I enjoyed it thoroughly and you know and I've I've enjoyed it and I tried to come back a couple of years ago um and my back didn't allow me to but it's nice to be back I know that Claire Peterson uh way back in the day you know 18 years ago was sure. was nice enough to give me uh, my first start here and I've always you know enjoyed the people here I've enjoyed the, the golf tournament John Deere's been a a special partner to the PGA Tour for a long time, so it's uh, nice to go over those low, uh, those stories from you know 18 years ago. That's impressive. I did not see that one yeah. coming. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. No. <laughs> Some yeah. things don't change. Yeah, right? no, yeah, no. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on my bus. Yeah, so I, uh, you got room? No. <laughs> I, yeah. I do, but you're going to be sleeping next to my kids. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll move beyond this. Yeah. Um, you. Uh, so, just thoughts on being back. I'm sure a lot's changed. Just yeah. thoughts on the course. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, nothing too dramatic. It's obviously got a little bit longer uh, since you know since being here, um, and it's also. A lot of the trees have been cleared out from what I understand, um, where you see the kind of, I think it's Rock River, um, you see more of that view, which is, I, I think it's quite pretty. Um, but yeah, nothing has changed too dramatically in, in regards to the golf course from what I understand, but um, still, you know, kind of one of those ones where you have to shoot a low score when you come here. Um, that's kind of how it always has been. And I think it's a nice change. We've come off the, you know, the back end of, you know, Memorial, US Open. Um, we had travellers where, where you can go low, but it's going through those tough weeks. It's, it's nice to come back to a course where you can score. Okay. And last question for me, and then we'll open it to these guys. You're in the midst of a good season, four top tens, including most recent top five at Wells yeah. Fargo. Just some thoughts on how you're feeling about your game, mindset, and so forth coming yeah, into the week. Yeah, I, I think I need a little bit of a spark. Um, try and get something going here. Yeah, obviously, we, we're coming into, the, you know, the heavy part of our season, which is, you know, we, I think we only got like seven tournaments left for the, for the year. So um, guys that are looking on the outside, looking in on the FedEx, you know, it's kind of crunch time for them. Um, me personally, I'm looking to try and find, you know, the good play that I had at the start of the year and try and, and try and, you know, kind of replicate that through, you know, my end part of my year. Um, I've got a busy schedule after this. It's kind of, it goes week on uh, here at John Deere, then it goes week off, and then I go to the Open Championship, a week off at the Olympics, week off, then the playoffs. So it's just kind of, you know, stop and start, but it's pretty condensed. It feels like it's uh, been a pretty full-on year already so far. Okay. Well, with that, we'll take a few questions. We'll start right over here. Jason, after 350 starts, is there such a thing as momentum in golf, or is this just yeah. week to week? I mean, you had a great weekend last uh, the yeah, Travelers. I, yeah. What happens? Yeah, I think um, de definitely there is momentum in golf for sure. Um, but also there's sometimes you, you hear stories of guys that have played eight weeks in a row and they've played terrible and all of a sudden they've won. You know, I remember Stuart Appleby, I think he won on his 13th start in a row um, back when he won his last one. And uh, there, there are where... The, stories of that but I I definitely think for me um you know kind of having a bit of a mid-season low it's I, I see I'm starting to see a lot of good signs coming out of my game right now I just I, I feel like I'm a little bit 
I've got a little bit more control with my irons. Um, I just ha I change the shaft in my in my irons, and I feel like that's kind of given me a little bit more uh, playability in regards to hitting draws and fades, um, working trajectories and working spin. Uh, so when I can do that, I feel like I've got like a lot more shots in the bag. And I've got more opportunity to to hit certain shots to certain pin locations. So. Uh, short game's good, driving's good, feel pretty good about that. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, get some momentum kind of rolling into this uh, second half. Jason, uh, got to go back to the Super 8. Was that, was that like an aha moment where you're like, oh, man, this isn't maybe as glamorous as I thought it was going to be? I got it for free, so um, I'm not complaining. <laughs> when you get something for free, you can't complain. Actually, and to be honest, it's, it, was, uh, it was great memories. I've stayed in some pretty rough uh, hotels over the years, and, um, yeah, it's, that, was, that was one of them. I, I do remember Dougie. We were both very young back then. But, uh, yeah, that was a... That was a an eye opener, first one of the first one, first one of the of my of my actual career. Um, when you is it uh, you've done it probably in a few times, but coming back to a golf course that you haven't played in a few yeah. few years, is it like starting over a little bit, or do the uh, does muscle memory kick in? No, I, you kind of remember, and it's I, I guess it's so different now. We like back then we didn't really have any stats guys, or like it was. You know, we were kind of on, you know, the start of, like, you know, a lot of this technology that we have now in, in regards to, like, you know, rank, like, track mans and all that stuff as well. So back then it was, it was I've gone through different phases, like, uh, where it was more old school way of playing to more offense. Guys out here drive it a very long way. They have stats guys. They have, you know, so many people on the team. It's, it's different these days. Um, but, you know, looking back, you, you know, I, I think it's, I still remember, like, I still remember all the holes, no problem. Um, it's kind of, I would say that my, my game plan hasn't really changed too, too dramatically. Like, I mean, if I'm taking 11, for instance, you don't really want to get it too far down there just because it kind of narrows in, necks in. And I remember hitting two iron there. Um, and But you kind of pick and choose, you know, and this is talking about, my stats guy, um, you kind of pick and choose what holes you want to kind of birdie. And there are a lot of opportunities out here, but if you can kind of average, you know, 500 a day here, you, you're probably going to be really close to um, the lead um, on Sunday, depending on the weather, obviously. Uh, two, just a couple more. The back, yeah. Um, yeah. Is, it, uh, is it something you have to nurse and are you, do you adjust your schedule accordingly? No, not anymore. I used to, but not anymore. I feel like I've kind of worked my way out of it, touch wood. So, I, you know, I feel, I feel good. You know, like I said, like a couple of years ago, I know Claire Pearson was retiring um, as, a, as tournament director. And um, I wanted to do a nice thing and, and come back and, 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 and support him. And obviously, unfortunately, my back went out on Wednesday and I couldn't play. But uh, it's nice to be able to be here talking about my back in a healthy way and, and, and in, a, in a positive note instead of a negative note. And finally, the Olympics, that's a different, uh, different uh, quote-unquote major to plug yeah. into the schedule. What, uh, what are your feelings about playing in the Olympics? Uh, you know, at, when it first came about, I think it was in 2016, I think I was number one in the world at the time, or close, one or two, um, I really didn't have any plans on playing the Olympics because it was just never on the radar, you know, it's just, and it's so hard because you're torn between two worlds of like, hey, the media's asking you like what it's like to be an Olympian and I'm like, I, I've never really wanted to play in the Olympics because it was never part of the, you know, the Olympics, not until, you know, early 1900s. So it's just, it was never something that I ever thought about. I love watching the Olympics, um, but now kind of looking back, I spoke about it last week, looking back on it, I probably should have gone down to Rio and, and played because I think it's, it's, it's something, you know, bigger than, you know, yourself. You're actually representing your country and your sport. And, and, and as an Australian, like, the Olympics is, is a huge thing because we're a big sporting nation. So um, to get a, another turn at it is, I feel very grateful for it. So... The travel's going to be, you know, kind of back and forth. Like, I'm going to go open championship, I'm going to be back for a week, and then I'm going to fly back over. So the, the time zones and the shifts of that, that's going to be a little bit tough. I'm not going to go to the opening ceremony, but 
uh, treat it like a normal tournament, try and get it, get over there and, and win a medal would be nice. You know, that's that's all, always the goal. But uh, I'm looking forward to representing Australia. I think that's uh, first and foremost. I've never, I've represented like Australia at every level as, as you know, a junior and amateur, and a, you know, obviously now I get to represent Australia at, at its you know highest level as an Olympian. Jason, you were talking earlier about the tough stretch of golf that you guys have had and yep. the tougher courses that you have played. Do you have any preference playing a course where even par is going to win as opposed to someplace like here where 20 under yeah. is going to win? No, I think, I think we need – I think they do a pretty good job of um, – I, I tell you what, if we got beat up every single week and even par was winning, it'd be, I'd be a miserable person. I was going to say something else, but I'd be, I'd be very miserable. I, I, wouldn't, I don't know if I'd play or stay in the game as long as, as, long as I've had. But um, I think there's a good mix. You need, you need like, some even pars. You need some, uh, you know, single digits, high single digit, win, uh, like, uh, scores. And then you kind of need your, your teens, low teens, mid teens. And now you need your, you know, your upper 20s. Because I just, I feel like it can kind of get a little bit stagnant if it's, like, too level par all the time and it's just hard and, and then it kind of gets boring for the fans so it's nice to be able to come to a golf course like this where there are scores and you have to kind of push and you, it's like kind of go you know even though it is four days and, and it's like more of a marathon than a sprint but you when you come to a golf course like this you, you can't really let up this a golf course like this brings in the whole field whereas in a golf course that sh when you shoot around even par the cream always rises to the top, so typically the guys that are, you know, all round very good game, those guys will play typically very well. Um, I like either or, but you know, right now it's uh, it's nice to be able to play this because, like I said, it's. I feel like the Open Championship is always always tough, even though that uh, Henrik and Phil Mickelson had that duel, you know, back at Troon, and they shot pretty deep, like a lot under, like I think it was twenty, right around twenty, if not twenty. Um, but who knows with the weather over there? It could be a, it could be a tough one. I heard they've had a lot of rain over there, so and and it's been soft and windy. So, and then obviously you know the Olympics, the golf course over there is tough. So I know that it's kind of nice to be able to get this in, and it fit well in the schedule too because I, I was never going to go across to Scotland and play two in a row. I just not with my family. It's just um, you know, I'd like to be selfish and go and play, but uh, I don't think you know my family would appreciate that. Well, yeah, we got a lot. The conditions out there right now are really soft. So um, I think the greens are, are they're very receptive. They're not as soft as I thought they were going to be. But uh, if we can scoot by tomorrow with um, with no rain, we get th uh, you know Thursday through Saturday. I think there's a little bit of rain on Sunday. Like I think it'll start to firm up, but like the scores will be low. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they're like low twenties just because of that. Getting two more. Um, the world of, since 2006, when that first start, how would you say the the world of equipment has changed from now yeah. to when you kind of made that to the start in 2006? I'm trying to think of all the clubs I had. Um, you getting ready to see them? Is that right? <laughs> Just the pictures. Yeah. Um, the driver heads definitely uh, a lot bigger. I think the driver is the most forgiving club in the bag, and I think that's why you see. Uh, more guys hitting driver than ever before. Like, you know, back then, even though it was metal, and it was still forgiving back then, but, like, you could hit it. If you'd miss hit one, you could get a little quacker going left, you know, a little duck hook off, off you know. It, it was kind of one of those things where you did, if you didn't hit it, it was still good, but it wasn't as good as what we have today, and that's why the, the game's changed. It's the most forgiving club in your bag. Um, so driver head's a little bit bigger, I would say, um, irons kind of the same you can't really like there's advancements in irons and stuff but like I would say that I'm playing more of in a game game improvement iron these days which is uh, tough to hear uh, <laughs> I need all the speed I can get and get it up in the air I used to be <laughs> I used to have a lot of speed it's uh, not like that anymore um, but uh, with that being said I think uh, not much the wedges have you know, everything's so much more dialed these days. I think, like, there's just the parameters on, like, um, having a wedge the same every single time. Granted, like, back then, I would play 
if I had a 60 degree wedge that I loved, because you you're playing it out of the rough bunker and, and the fairway, I would change maybe once a year, you know, and some guys would change like, you know, now these days guys change, you know, wedges probably, you know, once every tournament or once every two tournaments. I know Tiger changes every tournament. Um, but because everything's like so advanced in how they make a golf club, you can pre reproduce the same club over and over again. Um, and, you know, I still don't change a lot the wedge. I'm still the same. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think shafts are probably a little bit more advanced. Um, but, yeah, overall I would say, you know, the driver head's a little bit bigger. And um, I think the athlete itself is, is bigger and stronger than what the technology has really kind of given us. You look at some of these young guys now, they're like over six foot, you know, six two, six three, six four, and they're tall. They look like models, you know what I mean? They're <laughs> tall, wide shoulders, and they hit an absolute mile, um, which is very depressing <laughs> when you have to compete against them. So, um, you know, but the, at the end of the day, the good thing about, about golf is you've got to get the ball in the hole with the least amount of strokes. So if you can still do that, then that's all that matters. And just one follow-up, has your mindset changed a lot since 2006 and how you set up your equipment? Yes, it has, but it's mainly shaft-related, yeah. Um, I've had to go to a little softer shaft, <laughs> saying that. Um, I had to go to a little softer shaft so it kicks a little bit easier for me, um, so I can actually turn the ball over. I, I think I was playing the wrong shaft, kind of. No, I shouldn't say I was playing the wrong shaft. I was playing the shaft that I thought would take enough spin off for me, which it did, but I just couldn't really work the ball around because you've got to have. It's a big, heavy shaft. It's a 136 gram shaft. It's like a, it's like swinging a crowbar, um, and I love that. That's what I was playing when I was number one in the world. But I, also, I had 10 more miles an hour of speed, so um, it's kind of. I think it's time to stay in the softer shaft. This, this one's for Doug. What kind of dog, and did you keep it? And if so, what did you name it? Did it have fleas? This is a story for another time. we got to let this guy go. Oh, I love I, it. I, I love it, though. What, what, what yeah, dog no, was it? They, I don't know if you remember the construction workers. There were a group of construction workers outside of my – they were all ground floor right. rooms, right. and the window unit came out. But when I woke up, I had wedged the AC. The hole that the AC was in was too wide, yeah. which just made it go out. <laughs> So I put a towel to fill the gap. And yeah. when I woke up, one of the construction workers' dogs, it turned out, had come through and was asleep at the foot of my bed. <laughs> that's not something you really prepare for. Yeah. I thought, how wild did I get last night? Yeah. And, and, uh, but I'm impressed. I still have a picture of that AC unit when they finally you pulled do? it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I walked in there and I tried to close my curtains. My curtain fell off the... <laughs> It broke, literally broke off. I'm like, well, I guess I'm waking up at, you know, butt crack of dawn now. So, <laughs> yes. yeah. Good memories, man. Oh, oh dude. so good. I'm so, I'm so impressed that you remember that. Oh, it is. Yes. Yeah, well, one of the only things I can remember, but, you know, I don't have a really yeah. good memory, but it's only That's one thing. That's what you call friends for life, right? Yeah. Here. Super, <laughs> super eight. The super eight. 2006. <laughs> well, thank you, Jason. I thanks, appreciate your time as always. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Cheers.